Hey, uh, my name is Joel Mendonca, and in this session, we'll be looking uh, another type of VPN, which is a uh, MGRE. We'll be looking at the uh, multi-point uh, GRE tunnels, right? So, if you have seen my earlier videos, you would have seen that we did uh, the basic LAN-to-LAN um, -LAN VPN. Then we looked at GRE, right? And then we did something called as GRE over IPsec. So the problem with GRE is that um, you know it's it's designed mainly for point-to-point -point networks, right? So you know network of this sort which I have on the screen, it would be really cumbersome to to put in a lot of tunnels, right? Let's say you uh, have a very big network with uh, tens of routers, right? Let's say you have fifty routers, fifty sites, right? Um, it would be very difficult to create tunnels, or you'll have to manually create uh, fifty tunnels coming from R1. You'll have to create a tunnel from R1 to R2, R1 to R3, 4, 5, and so on, right? That's like too much configuration and too much manual work. So we looked at some we look at something called as a multi-point GRE. So with minimal configuration, you will be able to establish connectivity between all the sites. Okay, and on top of that, obviously, you can put IPsec and make it a secure VPN. Okay, that's what we are gonna look at. Um, uh, the basic uh, it's a very basic topology r6 is acting like my service provider every of this uh, router is basically a site r1 r2 r3 r4 and r5 is something which i'm not going to use now i'm going to park it for now maybe i'll use it later in the video or the next video right and um, every of the router has a set of loopback interfaces and it also has a public address associated with it 192.1.10.0, 20.0, 30.0, and 40.0. These being the public addresses. Wonderful. Great. Now, uh, yeah, let's start with the configuration. Let's do uh, uh, the connectivity configuration first, which means we'll start with R6, right? Uh, let's see if any configuration is already existing on this because I might have used these routers before. All right, so there's nothing. Let's do this. So let's do the configuration on R6 first, which means uh, let's put this up. All right, so we have uh, two uh, Ethernet interfaces. One is 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1. These are the interfaces going towards R1 and R5, and we are putting the IP addresses on them. Uh, we have 192.1.10.6 over here and uh, 192.1.50.6. Similarly, we have the IP addresses being put on, you know, the serial interfaces over here as well. So we are basically putting five different, we are enabling all the five interfaces and putting the IP addresses on them, right? So that's, so that's pretty much to be done on R6. That's my ISP. Uh, I don't think I'll be using that anymore. That's just the configuration that goes on R, on my ISP, right? Because I'm simulating an ISP. Um, now comes couple of uh, uh, you know configuration to be done on my sites as well so let's do that so you see on my site number one which is r1 i'm doing the uh, ip address configuration for the ethernet 0 slash 0 and i'm also putting in a couple of loopback interfaces which is 10.1.1 and 172.16.1.1 and also i need to put in a uh, you know default route saying that hey uh, router one if uh, there is any packet, you please uh, send it to R6, right? So I'm putting a default route as well. And the default route is pointed towards R6 because 192.1.10.6 is the IP address of this interface. Right, so that goes on R1, right? So uh, on R2 also, we need to do a very similar interface, uh, so with similar configuration, only the IP addresses would be different, right? The rest, everything would be same. So we put that, right? Uh, we have two loopbacks, we have the IP address on the serial interface and the default as well. So that goes on R2. Okay. Next, uh, we do something on R3, which is again important. So we do the next configuration on R3. There you go. We have a serial interface, two loopback interfaces and the default route, just like what we did earlier. I haven't actually yet started the MGRE configuration, this is just the basic connectivity. I'm just setting up the connectivity between my sites um, and uh, the basic, you know, public address connectivity. So let's do that. Yeah, here you go. I'm doing the 
uh, same thing for on R4 as well right looks good okay so that's done R4 is done let's do the same thing on R5 should be over here I won't be using R5 a lot uh, still I'm gonna do the connectivity configuration right great so there you go so that's basic connectivity which means uh, uh, if I let me just clear the screen a bit it basically means that I can now uh, uh, ping my I'm on R1 I can ping my default gateway which would be 192.1.10.6 uh, right I'm talking about this interface over here so let's see if this works yeah that works let's see if I can kind of ping uh, my R4 right public IP of R4 is 192.1.40 and 4 there you go it works so similarly we have connectivity to the public IP of R2 R3 and R4 great now comes the interesting piece of configuring tunnels like I said earlier why, why we are doing this because GRE just helps you to do point-to-point -point tunnels but what we are interested is creating multi-point because if you're using GRE then you'll have to create a lot of tunnels you'll have to create tunnels from R1 to R2 3 4 and so on so we are doing multi-point GRE right uh, so once we have done this uh, exercise we will have connectivity across the sites right you will be able to um, uh, connect to the so once we set up the tunnels uh, you'll be able to you know actually connect from one side to other right even the even the private addresses which are um, the private address of the tunnel over here will be able to talk to the private address of the tunnel so basically you will have connectivity across the sites right so that's what we are trying to accomplish right so it's fine if it's not very clear now you will get it as we do the configuration now uh, we got to do the tunnel configuration now or the MGRE configuration right it's again a tunnel so when it's a tunnel you have certain prerequisites you need to have an address for the tunnel you need to have a source address and then you need to have a destination address these are like the basic things right now the tunnel will have a network of its own so uh, we are going to use a private network like 192 1.0 right so uh, so that the tunnel address would be one of would be one of the address from this particular space a private address the next thing is you need to have tunnel source the tunnel source is going to be obviously the public IP of the router on which you're configuring now the tunnel destination is very important in a P2P tunnel what we would have done is the tunnel we would have just two routers and in that case we would have put the IP address of you know the other router to be the tunnel destination but in this case we can't do that because we have multiple routers you can't put multiple IPs as the tunnel destination right so we use a protocol called as NHRP over here right we use a protocol called as NHRP now <clears throat> what does NHRP do NHRP uh, helps us to define a mapping right so it says hey if there is a packet going from R1 to R4 then use this particular address as the tunnel destination if there is a packet going from R1 to R3 then use this address as the tunnel destination so it helps you to create this kind of a mapping right so let me pull that configuration up here so that it's easier to go through it and then we can configure them so you can see here we have the tunnel the tunnel address which is going to be 192.168.1.1 tunnel source right nothing new over here we have done this before as well and the tunnel mode okay so tunnel mode used to be GRE before now it's going to be GRE multipoint and this is the NHRP configuration so we do a IP NHRP network ID and you define a number this is just locally significant so it doesn't have any significance across the network you can use any number and um, now this is the mapping so we have explicitly manually done the mapping over here we are saying hey if you want to reach to 192 168.1.2 use this particular address as your public address right so this is basically going to be my uh, IP for my tunnel at R2 this is going to be my IP for my tunnel at R3 these are the pri private addresses so if R1 wants to reach to the private address or the tunnel of R2 how would I do it 
I need to use this particular address or I need to use this particular um, public address as my tunnel destination right just recap on what we learned with GRE before so we talked about how GRE uh, encapsulates uh, anything and uh, it, it, it does that by uh, um, so yeah so tun tunnel GRE is basically used for encapsulation and you have a tunnel source and you have a tunnel destination tunnel source is clearly defined at the router but the tunnel destination would be you know uh, defined by this mapping right since since if it is a point to point then you would explicitly define your tunnel destination but since it is not point to point you need to define a mapping saying that hey you want to reach to this router then use this as your tunnel destination and so on right because if you look at your uh, GRE encapsulated packet that's how it works right so you have an inside header and outside header the inside header would obviously if, if there is a packet going from R1 to R3 the source of the inside header would be 192.168.1.1 the destination would be 192.168.1.2 but these are the private addresses which can't be routed on the public network so you need to use a tunnel in this case GRE which would uh, encapsulate these private addresses and on the outside you will have a out, outer header which would have the tunnel source to be this one and the destination being this one so you get the point right so that's how it works so we are going to do this configuration now on uh, you know my r1 okay let's move on to r2 do the same thing on r2 as well the only change would be uh, putting in a new ip for the tunnel over here it's going to be 1.2 changing the source right and the mapping so when it comes to mapping uh, uh, on r2 we are we will have to mention the mapping for r1 r3 and r4 obviously you don't want to do a self mapping because there won't be any packet which is coming from r2 and going to r2 right so we define the mapping of r1 r3 and r4 great so we do that we move on to r3 right r3 is again pretty much the same um, it uh, um, yeah so we have the tunnel we have uh, the ip address of the tunnel source of the tunnel and then you have the nhrp mapping right and the mapping here would be for r1 r2 and r4 obviously you don't do it for r3 because you do this is the r3 router let's do one last thing on r4 So you have the tunnel and the IP address of the tunnel, source of the tunnel, and then you have the mapping of the tunnel, right? Mapping the NHRP mapping, which would be for R1, R2, and R4, R3 in this case. There you go. So we have set it up. We have set up the MGRE tunnel. Now, uh, you want to check? We could check that. Uh, how do we check? Let's do some ping, right? So what we are going to ping here? Let's ping the tunnel interface of, say, R4 right it's a private address look carefully it's 192.168 dot right um, will it be it's going to be 1968.1.4 look carefully I'm on R1 and I'm doing a ping for a private address right if, if you uh, if you didn't have the MGRE tunnel this would have not worked but now and I do yeah there you go it pings it works right the reason being we have done the mapping the nhrp mapping you can check that as well it shows show ip nhrp and there you go on r1 we have the mapping and uh, it says that if you want to reach to 192.168.1.4 then you need to use this to as your public address as the tunnel destination right and uh, uh, you 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 obviously have uh, the tunnel source right uh, okay, let's see the tunnel source. It's tunnel one, yeah. So here you go. So you can check the tunnel source uh, defined over here. Uh, you need to have that. Okay, tunnel one ninety two one sixty eight. We are on R one router. 
okay so this is the nhrp mapping explicitly defined again over here uh, you can see that you know it, it basically tells you that you want to reach 1.2 then you need to use this particular as a public address 1.3 use this one okay that's the earlier one okay um yeah so this is the ip of the tunnel right and here you have the tunnel source 192.1.10.1 so when a router sees a packet right sees a packet which has to um in, in this case just now like what i did i did a ping i did a ping to this address so when the router sees this particular address what it does is uh, you know it checks the nhrp mapping over here and it finds that um, you know the mapping for that particular ip is 192.1.40.4 and it creates a gre header and the gre header would be obviously um, having the tunnel source being 192.1.10.1 and the tunnel destination obviously from here and then it will put in all the payload right basically it will encapsulate the actual packet which is going from 192.1.1 to 192.1.4 right this packet so yeah uh, we have actually set up mgre tunnel over here uh, we can if you want we can check pinging any other tunnel interface maybe we'll try r3 which will be 192.168.1.3 there you go it works so that's just the mgre part um, obviously the traffic is not encrypted now we can run ipsec on this one and you can get a encrypted uh, um, tunnel right uh, what we are going to do this is we are going to extend on this topic in the next video we're going to talk about DMVPN and uh, then we will put in a routing protocol behind this router so that you know all we have we will even have connectivity from any of the hosts or any of the networks which are behind the routers as well right what I mean to say is we will be able to ping 10.1.1 from 10.1.1 we'll be able to ping right any router which is behind r4 which is 10.4.4 right we'll be able to do that so we're going to look at dmvpn in the next video thanks